It's January, and I'm in Paris to meet Marine Le Pen, leader of the Front National. The party was founded by her father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, who was widely condemned for his extreme right-wing views. But Marine insists that the old divisions of right and left no longer apply to the current revolution in European politics. Je pense que la fracture gauche-droite est un leurre. Voilà, c'est une fracture artificielle euh, qu'on pérennise depuis des années pour cacher qu'il y a une autre alternative. La vraie fracture, le vrai clivage, il est entre les patriotes et les mondialistes. Voilà. Et moi, je suis du côté du patriotisme, et c'est vrai que beaucoup de dirigeants européens euh, étaient jusqu'à présent encore du côté du mondialisme. Ces jours-là, vous voyez le début de la fin de l'Union européenne Si France sort de l'euro, l'euro, c'est fini, hein. c'est fini. Peut-être, et alors L'euro n'est plus une monnaie, l'euro est une arme politique. L'euro est un couteau que l'Union européenne met dans le dos des peuples pour les forcer à aller là où ils ne veulent pas aller. Vous croyez que nous, la France, on va accepter de vivre dans, sous le chantage, sous la menace, mais de qui De gens qui ne sont pas élus Mais il n'en est pas question. Vous êtes en faveur de Frexit Mais écoutez, deux, deux choses l'une. Soit l'Union européenne rend au peuple français la souveraineté territoriale, ses frontières, la maîtrise de son économie, la maîtrise de sa monnaie, et la supériorité de ces lois, soit je dirais aux Français, il faut sortir de l'Union européenne. Car le programme que je veux mettre en œuvre est interdit par l'Union européenne. Faire du patriotisme économique, c'est interdit par l'Union européenne. On l'a vu pendant le Brexit. Qu'est-ce qu'on n'a pas entendu Le soleil allait s'éteindre, euh, des tremblements de terre euh, allaient engl engloutir euh, Londres. Euh, euh, les poissons flotteraient euh, et, euh, sur le... le... Mais c'est de, de la folie. Et qu'est-ce qui s'est passé ben, Il s'est passé que des bonnes choses jusqu'à présent, me semble. Et qu'est-ce que vous dites aux gens qui disent « Mais vous ne respectez pas euh, les immigrants, euh, les juifs, que le Front National, que c'est que, que une, une partie politique euh, raciste, xénophobe, euh, anti-immigrant ?» Vous savez que, que ces critiques existent. Non mais écoutez, même en France... Ces critiques ne sont plus non plus courtes. Alors je veux bien que la Manche nous sépare. Enfin, c'est pas si grand que ça quand même que l'information n'arrive. Toutes ces toutes ces insultes n'existent même plus en France. Bon, il faut arrêter de les déverser euh, encore une fois en, en Grande-Bretagne. Ça, c'est l'argumentation de ceux qui n'ont rien à dire sur le fond. Pepe Grillo is known for being um, uh, a little bit creative, a little bit idiosyncratic. Um, will he do the interview? Will he not do the interview? You never know. It's part of the excitement. Signor Grillo, sono Katia Arla della BBC. Piacere, piacere. Ho un abbassamento di voce perché la passione mi consuma dall'interno. Perché io faccio, sono un comediante. Lo capisce che il mio, il mio cervello non ragiona dal leader di un movimento politico. Io penso una cosa, poi il giorno dopo ne dico un'altra. Il populismo è una bellissima parola populista. Sono orgoglioso di essere un populista. Dobbiamo dire di no. Il no. 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 Ma c'è una parte della società, come il mondo, no, che non ha niente. Si può cambiare? Si è già cambiato. È già cambiato. È già cambiato. Loro hanno paura di questo, della gioia, hanno paura delle, del, del senso dell'umore, dell hanno paura dell'ironia. E vincerete il prossimo Assolutamente elezione. sì. Grazie. Mi bacia adesso, vuole, mi bacia, vedo che proprio non ce la fa, mi bacia, kiss me. See you later. We have to reform this whole business. A more effective union, a more democratic union with a real European government with a, a real European defense uh, 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 capacity. European army? A European army, yeah. What's wrong on this? Here in Europe, yeah, we don't act. We don't take the decision because you need unanimity before you can do something. And it doesn't work in the world of, the, of today.
But look at France, look at Italy, I, look at uh, Denmark, Sweden. I mean, the list goes on, as you know. H how much support do you think there is for an idea? Not like more that? and more. Popular support. Yeah, yeah, more and more. What we feel is that um, since the Brexit, something had changed. I told after Brexit, oh, we're going to now have a referendum in the Netherlands about Nexit, a referendum in Denmark about Dexit. It didn't happen. What we see is exactly the opposite. Mr. Hofstad, I have to tell you that you are pretty much the only optimistic voice left. You know, no. and yes, in my work, whether it's the news on Europe or whether it's on this documentary. In your world, yeah. But at the same time, don't underestimate that, how, how could I say, the counter-revolution is already underway. Ordinary citizens who don't want it to destroy Europe, who are asking for a reformed European Union that's more effective. So since the Brexit, something had changed. The problem is the member states uh, play the game, there is that union, we have nothing to do with it, that union is playing against us. That blame game is uh, a virus which could lead to the end of the European Union. So you have member states pointing the finger of blame here at Brussels, you're sitting here and saying it's their fault and their responsibility. Throwing mud both sides is one thing, but in the meantime the European Union is falling apart. But not because of me. I try to keep it together. These are people like Mr. Orban who argue against the European Union. If the heads of state in the European Union do not stop pointing the finger of blame at Brussels, is the EU finished? If that uh, would continue as today, the risk that we fall apart is a real risk, yes.